In this edition of City News, Hawthorne is home to Olympian Jim Thorpe, and perhaps future Olympians may also be able to make that claim. We'll tell you why. Plus, we'll tell you what school held a health seminar for parents. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Welcome to City News. I'm Jennifer Murillo. We say goodbye to Captain Keith Kaufman, who will be leaving the Hawthorne Police Department. Or Kaufman accepted the chief of police position for the Redondo Beach and Police Department and will be sworn in before the public at the Redondo yet. Beach City Council meeting on October 20th. We wish Captain Keith Kaufman the best of luck. An Olympic couple has relocated their gymnastics training facility to the city of Good Neighbors. Shantae Passmore has this report from the All Olympia Gymnastics Center, where three athletes are gearing up to qualify for the Summer Olympics next year in Brazil. Gymnasts Elena, Alma, and Kylie have big dreams for competing in the 2016 Summer Olympics. So they turn to Galina Marinova for gymnastics training, who has competed in two Olympics and three World Gymnastics Championships. We immediately can identify, you know, they will have potential for Olympics or world or to get the scholarship for the best colleges in the country. For gymnasts competing at high level performances, the training can be gruesome, sometimes up to six hours a day, and there are many injuries. Then there are also some days where like it's just, I hit all my routines and then it like shows in the competition and then it just kind of assures me like, okay, I'm doing this for a reason. Marinova and her husband, also an Olympian, recently relocated their facility to Hawthorne. City officials welcomed the move during a grand opening ceremony. This is a true testament of where we are here in the city of Hawthorne. We're growing. As part of the celebration, young gymnasts watched the three athletes demonstrate their skills on the bars. The ladies will compete in October in Scotland for the World Gymnastics Championship. If they do well during the competition, it will qualify them to compete in Rio de Janeiro next year for the Summer Olympics. For HCTV, I'm Shante Passmore. On behalf of everyone here at HCTV, we hope the ladies will do well during their competition. To learn more about the Gymnastics Center, visit www.allolympiagym.com. West Basin will be celebrating 20 years of water recycling. Visit the Water Harvest Festival to learn more about the value of water, take a tour of the recycling facility, participate in games, giveaways, and more. The free Water Harvest Festival will be taking place on Saturday, October 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility located at 1935 South Hughes Way. According to American Diabetes Association in 2012, 21.9 million Americans or 9.3% of the population had diabetes. Grupo Con Decision is working on trying to help reduce that number. Francisco Castillo shows us how. Rafael Garcia from Providence Little Company of Mary is part of the outreach program, and he was invited to speak to the parents at Zella Davis about diabetes. We're going to provide some marginal information, but uh, information that can let people know if they are uh, pre-diabetic, diabetic, what to do, what are the symptoms, um, the treatment plan. According to the American Diabetes Association, 29.1 million Americans had diabetes in 2012. However, 8.1 million were undiagnosed. So these small workshops, even though the information is very marginal, it really provides a, a very good baseline, a, a very good foundation to let people know uh, if they are predisposed to being pre-diabetic or diabetic. The reason and the motive I came here was so that I could learn about diabetes. I know the word diabetes, but I don't know the dangers that come if you don't take care of yourself. New cases of diabetes saw a drop from 1.9 million to 1.7 million from 2010 to 2012, meaning classes such as this one have helped spread awareness. Angel Santiago from Grupo Con Decision says that he helps orchestrate seminars such as this one as a reminder to everyone that you must keep track of your health in order to prevent illnesses such as diabetes. I learned many things because the truth is that sometimes we tend to forget the numbers, the A1C, what's a good count, a medium count, and what's a high count. 
After the class, everyone was invited to take a glucose test. For HCTV, I'm Francisco Castillo. If you would like more information or tips on how to prevent diabetes, visit www.diabetes.org. Cornbloom Elementary was the host of the fourth annual Family and Pet Extravaganza, helping benefit Hawthorne schools. Stephen Jane has a story. While most children grow accustomed to having dogs as a family pet, Luciano Aguilar spent most of his youth afraid of them. That is, until his military experience changed his perspective. All right, you want to work with dogs? Well, let's see how you handle a dog attacking you. Uh, and then from there, my, uh, my fear turned into, into a passion. Aguilar's new calling led him to open a dog training business and a clothing line, but it wasn't until he took a seat as a school board member when he made a difference. When I had the opportunity or when I was asked, well, you know, well, what can you bring to the table? I was like, well, I have this event that I've always wanted to do, and maybe we could do it for the kids and try to raise money for, for the kids. Education and fundraising are very important goals for this event. While the money raised will benefit the children in the classrooms, it also provides a chance for the parents to see how invested their school district is in their children. Well, it, it's, it's a great thing, so it lets our parents know that we care, we want to have events for them. Uh, it it uh, gives us an opportunity to let them know that we're not just here just to educate, but to provide fun opportunities to interact and be a part of the Hawthorne School District community. How this event benefits the children and their parents has been very clear, but what about the community as a whole? I think it's really important, I mean, in order to put on an event like this with very few sponsors and mostly, you know, just funded by the community, um, I think it's important to get everyone out here just for the kids and get everyone involved and, um, you know, just connect animals with people is just a great thing. I think it's how um, the community comes close, you know, it's, it's the music, it's the food, it's friends, like, like I said, you meet new people all the time, um, it's awesome, it's fun. Money raised through the event helps supplement classroom supplies, field trips, and other costs throughout the district. While of great assistance, these minor purchases continue to motivate Aguilar's bigger dreams. I'm hoping to make this event one day um, so great. Maybe if we get into one of those uh, situations that we were in a couple years back where we were hurting for money, uh, you know, maybe we save a job or two. That's really my goal. While the heat might have been a little rough, the smiling faces and all the money raised for Hawthorne schools suggest that everybody had a doggone good time. For Hawthorne Community TV, I'm Stephen Janes. For more information on how you can help the Hawthorne Education Foundation, visit www.hefonline.com. Coming up next on City News, see how fashion designers are inspired by quadratic formulas and other math theories. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. Welcome back. A math instructor from Hawthorne High School wanted to shake up her curriculum and managed to do so in a fashionable way. Shantae Passmore has a story. Lights, camera, action. Fashion designers are showcasing their fiercest designs inside of phantom galleries. Their inspiration? Math theorems. We use um, quadratic shapes and we use the famous shape, the ellipse, to um, shape our design because our teacher gave us certain list of, of the math that could be involved in it. And we're changing how math is being approached and how arts gets isolated as against math. School officials say the hands-on fashion project is one of the many ways schools across the nation are moving their curriculums towards STEAM disciplines, otherwise known as science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. It's the way that we're going because I think for so many years we were just providing students, children with information. You know, they'd either memorize it or not and then they'd forget about it. Everyone can see that these geometric objects can also be art objects and they wore them as fashion and it was just a beautiful show. In addition to using real world application and making math fun, educators say the project also satisfied the National Common Core Standards, a list of high quality academic standards that aim to prepare students for either college or a career. For HGTV, I'm Shante Passmore. The city of Hawthorne presents a Halloween spectacular carnival. The carnival will take place at the Hawthorne Memorial Center on October 29th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. 
Wear your scariest, funniest, or most creative costume to enter in the costume contest, play games, and win prizes. For more information, call 310-349-1640. All of the Hawthorns seem to come out for a night of fun and community celebration. Kelly Moody has a story. St. Joseph's Parish and School held their annual fiesta this year by kicking it off with student performances and speeches from local officials. Neighbors waited with anticipation to crowd the food booths and line up for carnival attractions operated by over 400 volunteers. But many, including Hawthorne Council members, were already familiar with the fiesta lineup. I went here from first to eighth grade, so every, every one of those years and even every, ever since then I've been coming to the fiesta the last 44 years, even when I was probably a little baby. This is so important because this is the only festival in this area in North Hawthorne and it's a great opportunity for the neighbors to get together and get to know each other and to meet each other. And as the sun set, flashing lights, scores of delightful screams and diverse scents filled the air around the parish. Children and adults of all ages piled into the lot, exploring entertainment and visiting with friends. I love the rides and I love hanging out with my besties each year and also performing. St. Joseph's Fair is arguably one of the largest events held here in Hawthorne and each year the funds raised goes towards St. Joseph's School and the parish. While donations are expected to make a difference for the church, attendees like Lorena Ayala believe that the fiesta does even more for the community. Es importante estar it's important to come together as a united community and see the neighbors we don't see regularly. We see them here. We just have a good time. St. Joseph's Fiesta was focused on creating a fun and safe event for attendees to enjoy. Whether that meant spinning in circles on the Ferris wheel, chowing down on delicious fair food, or taking the time to chat with some neighbors. This is Kelly Moody, HCTV. Father Greg King shared with us that in the past four years, more than $60,000 has been raised for St. Joseph's Parish and School. Art has a strong presence in the city of Hawthorne. The latest gallery exhibit was held in Gallery H on Hawthorne Boulevard, displaying a large group of Los Angeles artists. Over 30 artists display their artwork in the show titled Where Magic Happens. These are artists that are going out of the box to be entrepreneurs in themselves, to get their work out there and to get out of their comfort zone where the magic happens. The way things are presented, it's not only the piece, but the presentations that itself is unexpected. So it just um, allows you to step into a different world and experience different perspectives. It's a very excellent group of artists and a variety of work and media. And I think, you know, there's a lot of good work. Some of the array of artwork on display was created from personal experiences of the artist. I started making these little memory boxes in the beginning that reminded me of my childhood in Vienna. And um, then I started kind of working on, on the same project, but more as my art project when I came back to Los Angeles. With my art, I almost invent the history of the family that I didn't know because they uh, got killed in the Holocaust. So it all comes out of my life. My interest in recycling, repurposing, um, being, being green. While other artists just let their imagination go. I don't always know where my work is going, but if I just allow myself to explore, then magic can happen. Vacant spaces that are transformed, like Gallery H, are making art accessible to the community and art enthusiasts. It's wonderful to be able to bring the art here, you know, to those spaces that really aren't used very much. Not only are they working on the quality of the art that is presented, but they're also working on making it very accessible. Curator Christine Shoemaker says that phantom galleries, such as this one, allows artists to reach huge audiences and sell their artwork outside of a high-end gallery. To find out more about this gallery and upcoming ones, go to www.phantomgalleriesla.com. HCTV is both pleased and saddened to announce that a reporter, Jennifer Wade, has accepted a position for an NBC Fox affiliate in Bend, Oregon. Wade joined our news team in 2013. Viewers may be familiar with her work as she reported and hosted for our channel. 
We wish her the best of luck at her new station. She will be missed. Keep it right here on Channel 22 for these future city news stories. We'll take you to the annual community barbecue dinner, benefiting the Holiday Assistance Program. Also find out what went on at the Islamic Center open house and find out which school are now required to wear school uniforms. That does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310-349-1630. Don't forget you can watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with more footage from the St. Joseph Family Fiesta. See you next time.